your life, you have to report. Oh, so she, she loves this man so much. Y'all know what she did? She has her tour set up where he could be on the tour, but because he can't be around minors, they have a section <gasps> for minors. And anybody under the age of 18 has to wear a pink vest so they can Ooh. identify them as oh, underage people I've never heard at this that. concert. I've never heard it before. I don't know how to feel about it, but I've never heard it. <laughs> I've never heard it. Listen, we're going to be right back. Don't y'all go nowhere. We got Nathan Lindor here. Sassandra Show. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Sassandra Show. I don't know what time it is where you are, but baby, it is five o'clock somewhere. Woo! like music to my ears. Y'all joining me to sip and spill is podcast host, Mr. Nathan Lindor. Like sunshine. I try to be. You, you're doing the dang thing. Thank you so much for joining me today. For sure. Child, we got a lot to talk about. I can Ooh. see. So, Mr. Nathan. Yes. We are going to dive deep into your story. But first, I want to talk about some of the tea I talked about earlier. First off, the difference between the WNBA and the NBA. Oh, my God. What on earth is, why is there such a huge gap in salary? I don't know. I just feel like, I think it's like more of a like, because me personally, I don't see when the WNBA is going on. You see when the uh, NBA is going on. You don't see on. when it's going on? Yeah, it's so like. So you don't even know it's been happening for the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 Jesus. No, it's just like, what is happening, I catch it when the playoffs is going on. So it's like, I feel like they don't have enough advertisement for the players as much. I know. I normally notice when it goes on the Olympics, when the females go on the Olympics, because they're the best. Yes. They, they kill it. So it's like, 
I feel like it's more promotion need to be put into it. Yes. Definitely. More, wait a minute. More promotion and more support. Support, definitely. Support from the fans. But it's really exciting, don't you think? Like, we're hearing more about the WNBA definitely. this year than ever, right? Yes. And that's a great movement in, into a place where they can ob obviously start making more money, yeah. start doing the things that some of the NBA players might be doing. Definitely. Like, living their best lives. <laughs> On a good salary? Let's get some dunks. I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's get some dunks. We'll get some. some three, six, Listen, I'm up. sure my <laughs> girls can dunk the ball. Don't they? They, they can, can dunk. I think this color season with the girls doing their thing, I is. think it blew it up even yes. more. Yes. Yeah. And this the first time, like I said, I seen the WNBA draft, seeing the girls actually get drafted, that was something that was big. Right? Isn't that amazing? Definitely. That in 20 years, this is the first time we really paid attention to the WNBA draft. The girls are just taking over the world. They are taking over! All right. Who runs the world? Girls. girls. Hey. <laughs> All right. So now, ghostwriting is so normal in the music industry. But people People feel like it's an artistic betrayal in a sense. What's your thoughts on ghost writing? Uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's just some people, they got the look, they got the sound, they just can't put they it They can't down. write. Yeah, so it's just all, it's all a part of the game. Well, the crazy part about it is that when you say ghost writing, uh, they're not giving the writers credit. They make it seem like they writing. I don't know. No, it's true. So ghostwriting is like, you know, I pretty much did this and you didn't. And the reason it doesn't have as much credibility in rap is because rap is like the truth. It's you. It's your persona. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's supposed to be the, the thing you done lived your through story. on the streets. Yeah. Your story. Yep. So when you have a ghostwriter, people tripping. What's the first artist you think of when we say ghostwriting? Real quick, you got five seconds. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. You know who you think about. <laughs> who you think know. about when we say ghostwriting? Come on. Five, four, three. I don't think it, but they say Drake. Nah, oh. you ain't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, but they, they say, say Drake. They thinking about it, but they say Drake. Guys, talk to talk to me about ghostwriting. I'm with you. I'm I'm from the old school um, when rap first began. Rap is still a baby as a genre. Mm -hmm. Rap's about old as me. That's all. So um, you started out, it's your persona, it's mm -hmm. your ego, it's your life story. Yes. I'm just writing what I've seen, what I've done, who I know, what, and all this. And certain songs, you can rap about certain things that maybe a ghostwriter could have put out. Right. Let's just rap about a party. Let's throw some double entendres. Let's throw some words together. Nice story Let's be real song. clever. Yeah. That's nice. Like maybe welcome to Miami. Like well, right. maybe something like it's just fun. But if you're rapping about I done did this, I done did that, and all this. That's when nobody you can gotta tell draw that the line. story except you. No one should. No one can. And it's, but people do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I'm old school. You ain't got to say nothing. He's like, I ain't saying nothing. Because eventually, so eventually I want to get close to them guys, eventually. We, you will get close to them. Yeah. They're not going to diss you because... You never know. Something They're not going to diss them. Come on, sis. You can get close to them. See that? I got words. I got bars. Don't mess yeah. with me. Now, I know you've seen this whole Drake and Rick Ross beef going on. What are they even fighting about in the first place? A bunch of nothing. Really? A bunch of What's nothing. a bunch of nothing? Just who made this song, who did this, and who, why not? I just feel like they was all cool. Like, they was, they got music together. Yes. Great songs at that. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, why, why we can't just come together and just focus? Because people, they got fans that's looking up to them and yes. seeing them do this. And it's like, that's what people are tending to do behind it. So it's like, I'd rather mm. just see them just squash it and get back to making good music. Wouldn't that be bit. nice? I yeah. hope they can, because it's just been a lot of little beefs popping up lately. Everywhere. It's New insane. I'm, I'm starting to think it's like for marketing and yes. promotion, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just entertainment. Like, y'all trying right. to just keep yeah. us talking about y'all, yeah. but we gonna do it! Because <laughs> <laughs> we love you! Oh, my goodness. So how did this thing even start? I don't know. I heard, uh, I seen on social media that um, Rick Ross was in a club saying, I bet y'all can't write this. I bet y'all don't know who wrote this song. Yes. And I was like, so he was in a club and a Drake song was playing yeah. and he said, I bet y'all don't know who wrote this. <gasps> this! Listen, let's move on <laughs> since you don't want to talk to me. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about you, child. Let's talk about you! Yeah. I know you are now a podcast host, yes. right? Tell us your story before hosting. What's your story? Um, just grew up in the city of Orlando. Did a lot of different things. Played sports like every other kid. And I was just trying to find my way uh -huh. growing up. 
And then I was like, I talk a lot. I'm good with people. That's and then awesome. I was like, I was kind of in a stage where I was kind of lost, had anxiety, and I kind of figured mm. out my way. I took a trip to Tallahassee and sat down, was talking to myself. Don't think I'm crazy, y'all. I was talking to myself. <laughs> and I we was all like, do it sometimes. Yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> I want to do my own show, my own talk show. Wow. And then it just came about. And then I sat down and talked to my stepdad about it, and we, we made it happen. That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Yeah, appreciate it. So what significant challenges in your life ultimately made you want to focus on the mental health of other people? Um, I just really wanted to tell people stories mm -hmm. um, behind their craft, whether they're entrepreneurs, artists, athletes, whatever. I wanted to tell their story behind it. That's why it's called What We're All Thinking Stories Behind the Craft. Because mm -hmm. I want to know behind what you did to get to that point. Mm, the struggle. The struggle. And also, I was watching a show on VH1 called Behind the Music. Yes. And I was definitely into that. And I've always been into documentaries and stuff like that. So. Here we are. Like, hey, I can do this. Yeah, definitely. I love it. I love yeah. it. And you're doing the dang thing. So what do you think are some common misconceptions about youth mental health? Um, there's always that saying, oh, you young. You can just be quiet. Or mm -hmm. what you crying for? Or like, right. you'll figure it out. And it's like, nah, that's not how it always works. Some people that's don't think it. like that. Some people, you got to literally go by yourself because people are scared to be alone. So once you finally are okay with being alone and okay with your thoughts, it's way different. It is. Yeah. And all of us should have came out of pandemic being okay with our thoughts. <laughs> yes. When I tell you we had a Ooh. lot on our minds and all we could do is Definitely. think about it, Definitely. not interaction or engagement with people. So I agree with you on that. Definitely. How do you see the impact of social media and technology on the mental well-being of today's young people? Um. In my perspective, I use it as a tool to help me. Mm -hmm. um, some people, they use it as a imagery to see what other people are doing. Mm. So if they see you doing something, they, oh, why I can't be in her shoes instead of what did she do to get in her shoes, Ooh, if that makes sense. That's interesting. Yeah, so it's why like a step Why I tool. can't be in her shoes instead of what did she do Definitely. to be in those shoes. Definitely. That's deep. So why do people, why are people like that? And what can you do to help them change that mindset of just trying to figure out how someone did something so that they can achieve it opposed to the jealousy? Um, it's just also about being consistent, staying in their face, just understanding where you can help them at. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's always cliche. They never had nothing, so they don't know what it's like. They just see the final, final product. They don't see the bumps and roads you had to go through to get honey, to that point. Because it ain't easy. Yeah, definitely. Right? So they don't see the bumps and the roads you had to go through to get to that point. They just see the final product. It's it looks so nice. true. So you got to teach them the grind. That's what I'm all about. I show people step by step. Whether I look crazy, whether I look good, I want you to see all of it. In Everything. Mind. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So you sound like a great mentor. I try to be. Yes. <laughs> so what age group of children are you working with? Um, I work with different types of children. Um, I kind of, when I was growing up, I always wanted to help. I'm the oldest of nine brothers. Really? Yeah, so. Get out. Yeah, How young is the youngest? Uh, he's about to be three, uh, four, two. Are you no, serious? No, you didn't say that. He did not say three <laughs> or four. Uh, uh, That's amazing. Yeah, I got so many, so it's hard to keep up with ages. <laughs> I guess you don't even know. My goodness. I'm going to tell you what my family did. We did a little calendar, so it'd just be on the wall. And oh, I know the birthday. I just don't picture. know the age. <laughs> Yeah. That's a crickets moment. So yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. Your, podcast, your podcast is all about standing on business. Definitely. Tell us about standing on business. Um, standing on business is another platform that I created for underground artists to help them get their music out. Mm -hmm. Because I was walking around my um, city and finally, because I was always tapped into the industry. I wasn't tapped into my city. So um, I was just going to these different clubs, just trying to feel the vibe. And I was hearing horror stories about artists getting not getting the just do that they deserve. Mm. So I was like, let me create my own platform. Let me use my podcast to create the platform. And I brought a whole bunch of underground artists. We had a great time. Uh, we sold 150 tickets. It was Wow, that's amazing. Definitely. Well, listen, we are wishing you continued success. Thank you so much for joining us yes, today. Definitely. And come back anytime. Y'all, Mr. Nathan Lindor for the culture. Yes, y'all. Thank y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Come on. Just scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen. Because we've got so much more exclusive content for y'all and great guests just like we did today. Thank y'all so much for tuning in and spending time with us on the beautiful Comarosa set. And until next time.
love one another, stay beautiful, and we'll be right here for you on the Sisandra Show.